I was telling people, uh, my laziness made me efficient and my efficiency made me money. <laughs> so that, that, that's exactly what happened. Um, that's why I'm the drip campaign queen because I just want, don't like reinventing a wheel. All right. So we're going to do another template. In this case, we're going to do a text template. So I'm going to call this Facebook, uh, uh, and then I'm going to go buyer text one, right? And we're going to say it's almost the same thing. Thanks uh, for registering. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Scottsdale. That's it. Oh, we would call it thanks new registrant. I forgot what I called it. But this case, I call, I'm calling it a text so I can find it. And we're going to put this in my buyer text folder and we're going to make this a text. So now we have a text and we're going to do the same thing here. Hi there. And then put in first name, first name, and then hit insert. Um, thanks for requesting uh, Scottsdale. By the way, I live in Scottsdale in case you wondered. Scottsdale home information from me on my Facebook page page. Uh, please be sure to check your email. I am in the process, right, of sending you out the information you requested, right? Now, here we go. You requested. Um, can, uh, are you looking to purchase soon or just browsing, right? Purchase soon or just browsing get an answer from them, get them talking, ask a question, just don't send something because you know what's going to happen. They're going to look at it and say, oh, isn't that nice? Um, you could ask anything else, just get them talking to you. Ideally, you don't want a yes or no um, soon or just browsing, no matter what they say to you, you should keep that conversation going. That's again, a whole nother lesson I could teach you about lead follow-up, but um, get them talking to you. Calls to action are not uh, hey, let me know when you're ready. That's not a call to action. A call to action is um, asking a question and get them talking to you. At this point, you could choose to put a link to your UR website there, but I'm going to tell you between me and you, I wouldn't do that because they're going to click away and not write back. So let's see if we can get them writing to you first. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead down here. And again, you can't see it, but there's a button down here. It says save template. Well, I'll drag it down. Save the template. I'm going to go ahead and save it. I should have made this screen bigger before I started it. All right, so you're getting the scoop. You're going to go in and create as, uh, as many of the templates that you need, the email and the text. Now, um, some of the training I provide does give you kind of a, a time frame on how often and how much you should send early on versus as you're going along, but you should have at least a year's worth. And um, you want, I guess, if you're a Keller Williams or anyone like that, you want to have at least 30 some touches throughout the year. I'd only, I only say that because that's what Keller Williams says. Uh, I'll tell you between me and you, I'm not a fan of the 10 days of pain. Uh, 10 days of pain you can build into a third, a three, I'm sorry, into a 33 touch campaign. Your goal is to turn a campaign on and not have to worry about shutting it off or turning on something else. You shut it off only if they get back to you and tell you they're ready to go or depending on what they say. So keep the campaign built, uh, running, and then you just need to know how to turn it off. So you're going to go in and create all these templates just like I showed you, right? I'm not going to go into creating 30 touches, but you guys can figure this out. Now, what's the next step? We're going to go ahead and get ready to create the campaign. So I'm going to go back to the next, the last screen and go to create campaign. And uh, let's see here. We're going to call this campaign a uh, Facebook ad campaign, buyer campaign, buyer campaign. Now, again, this is kind of generic. So if you're running five different ads for five different things in Facebook, you can take this campaign and um, clone it and then make it more specific to if it's say you're offering a buyer guide or it's a list of homes in Mesa, you know, somewhere else. That's fine. Just edit the campaign when you get it done. All right. So we're going to go to the campaign and start creating this. Now, this is where it's different. It's way different than what the other system had in V1. Uh, and so I'm going to go ahead and go to create campaign. Now, at this point, you have these choices and you're going to go through this series of things you're going to do. So adding an action. First thing we're going to do is add, uh, let's add a text first. 
actually, you know what? I like to actually add an email first. I like to send them both an email and text at the same time. So I'm going to go email. So I'm picking it out and I'm going to go next. Now here's the part that when I was learning this, and by the way, I was a beta tester in the early days when LionDesk was blowing this thing up and trying to create the new version of this. One of the struggles I had was this button right here says edit. When you click on this, you would think you could edit and put an email in here. This is not where it goes. Okay. You need to come down here and click next. So it's just, it was just not very intuitive to me, but just so you know, that the only edits you're going to change it from text to email. Okay. Or task or lead assist. Okay. So these things you can do, but, um, you want to make sure this is that you understand that. So the next step, you're going to pick an email and you're going to go to next. And then it's going to take you to the next screen where it says, find a template. Well, I just created some new templates, so I have to go track down the folder where it's at, or I could probably run a search, but my search is probably not going to find me in a lot because I have so many campaigns and templates in here. So I'm going to go to my buyer emails. Notice that the text is, is grayed out, so that's fine. And I only have one in here right now, so I'm going to go ahead and grab that. And go to next. Okay. Let me get over here and get out of the way again. Um, now the timing again, this is where it's different. So your choices are immediately. So we're going to say, when do we want this to go immediately? Do we want to delay by a day in time or do we want to delay by minutes? So in this case, it's a brand new lead coming in from Facebook. We want to send it immediately. So I'm going to do that. But before I move on, I want to talk a little bit about the differences here. Dele delaying by day and time is actually going to delay in days. And so the delay in days is going to delay from the start of the campaign. So if you're delaying in days from today, then it's starting delay in days from the start of the campaign. So delay in days by however many days. So zero, right? Uh, actually, this is going straight out. So actually, I'm not going to do this because I, I, you know, now I'm delaying from this point from the start of the campaign. So I need to, I'm not doing it because I'm going to do this one. I'm just showing you. Delay in minutes, though, I could say I want it to delay for 10 minutes from the moment that the uh, campaign goes on, right? So that's how this sets up. So we're going to just go ahead and send this one immediately and go to next. And then if you have a team, you can choose who it's going to come from. So here's where it gets kind of sticky is that if you have a team and you know that this campaign is going to be running from team members, you want to make sure you sent you set it to contact assigned user, contacts assigned user. So if, if the user was you initially and then you assign it to someone else, the first thing is going to come from me. But in a week, if I assign it to another agent, it's going to go from that other agent. Right. So I would say assign to use. Don't ever pick anyone individually to send it from unless that's the only person who's ever going to send that campaign. But there's really no need to do that because if you're assigning leads to people as a team member or as a team leader, if you do it like this, it will come from either you or it'll come from that team leader. So if it's a, I'm sorry, it'll come from that team member. So it doesn't matter if it's assigned to you, it's going to come from you. If it's assigned to the agent on your team, it'll come from the agent if you do this. If you don't do this and it's just me, but I have a team and I want the letters to come from the agent who's on the team, it's still going to come from me. So guess what's going to happen? If the consumer writes me back, writes us back, it's going to come back to me, not that agent. So if you know you're going to have a team, set it to this right now. Okay. All right. Next, go to submit and we're going to the next thing. Um, add another action. Do you want to add another action? I do. I want to go and add a text now. So I'm going to have that text actually go. In my world, I like it to go at the exact same time. Um, but I think for purposes of what we're doing here, I'm going to go ahead and um, send it 10 minutes later. For this kind of thing, I would do it right away. But I'm just going to go ahead and send it 10 minutes later. So I'm going to pick that and go to next. And now I'm going to go 10 minutes later. Now, the difference between V1 and V2 right now that you must know is that um, V2 you, V2 does not it does no longer has anything related to dates in here. So if you wanted to send it up, set it up to do for holidays, 
if you wanted to, um, you know, set it up so that you're doing a sphere and the sphere is set specifically to happen a certain time a month every uh, every year. It's always going to be on January 1st or it's every every year is going to show up on a certain month or day. It's not going to work because it's not here. Uh, I have no idea why. Um, I really don't. I'm not going to say anything about it, but I'll tell you right now, <laughs> this was a challenge for me because one of the other huge things that they took out of V1 versus V2. So if you decide to come over here, if you are a V1 user, the recurring tool is gone. So you used to be able to send the same template out over and over again, which is how I got on the first page of Google uh, using this campaign is I set something up that would go out every three to five, every three days, every seven days, every 30 days, depending on what it is. Um, so I would send the same template out and drive them over to my site and look at listings. So that's missing. That's not here. So if you're coming in from V1 and you have a campaign set up with anything date related or anything recurring related, it's gone. It's not going to work. In fact, I think that the campaign, you're going to get warned it won't work. So be careful. Um, now, in this case, if you wanted to stop on text reply, you could. I'm going to tell you now, I wouldn't do it. The reason is, is because you know how many people have those auto, I'm driving right now. If that text came back to you, it's going to shut the campaign off. So you really just need to make a decision. And they might even say, I'm not quite, I'm not, can I call you later? Or can I get a hold of you later? You do not want to shut the campaign off if somebody says something like that. So I would never use this. I, I don't. I, I manage my business hands on. If somebody's writing me back, I'll deal with it when they write me back. But don't rely on this, you guys. Do not rely on that because it might shut it off. And then you, you've lost, your, the, the campaign's going to shut off. You don't want that. Okay, next. Um, all right, I'm going to go ahead and assign this one to me. That's fine. Keep going. All right, now I'm going to add a couple of other actions in here. I don't have, I can keep going and add more text and stuff like that um, and all that, but I'm going to go ahead and add a task. So let's see what that next task might be that we want to do. Insert task instructions. So, uh, so this is interesting. You just tell yourself what you want to do. Um, call, let's do this. Call the lead. Uh, call the new lead, right? And so that you want to do pretty much right away. Um, so that's all I'm going to do right now and just put that. <laughs> Let's do that. And then set the timing again. This would be something, honestly, I would want to do right away. Oh, look, this one actually has a recurring on it. Isn't that interesting? Set the timing for recurring. They, although it won't recur the emails, <laughs> you can recur this. Okay, let's do it. Let's see what happens. First task starts on um, day one, right? We wanted to and we wanted to and let's see. Sorry, we wanted to start uh, campaign starts and then we wanted to repeat. Let's just say we wanted to repeat every uh, every two days after uh, uh, three occurrences. So that reminds me, every two days I should call them in case I didn't get a hold of them. How about that? And you can set the time on when you want this to happen. If I was going to do a lead call thing, I probably would set it for like eight in the morning so that I can notify myself um, that I want to do this. So that's interesting. Okay, we'll go to next. There we go. All right. So now I got that set up. Let's go to submit. So you're just going to keep going and keep going until you add in all the stuff that you want, right? Um, one of the things I really like about my serum is that I'm able to actually put in, um, con I can add flags, I can add contact types, I can add m reminders to myself, I can add text notifications to myself, um, I could do a whole lot of things in here. Um, so this is a little limited on the kind of stuff, but I would say at the end of this, what I would do is be sending, setting myself a note, which I would do, I would put a note in in here so if there's some way i guess you could set um a note uh that will say something in here let me actually add another task this task is going to be like a reminder to you i guess so to come in here and just say uh the campaign has ended right so whenever uh so buyer campaign has ended buyer campaign has ended consider another campaign um like I would put them on a sphere, a sphere campaign or a re-engagement campaign, uh, like a re-engagement campaign or a sphere campaign. 
again, this this is for your own remember to remember things because if you're like me, I forgot what I had on yesterday, you know. <laughs> All right, and this one actually, I would probably want to delay um, by uh, days, and so let's just say I've gone and gone and gone. I this would be at like day 365, probably 365, and go to next, and then go to submit. All right. Actually, I just noticed there was a set up a reminder back there on that last screen. That was new to me. Uh, let me go back. Oops, I've lost it. All right. Well, let's go back. All right. So I've got on here. Um, let's go here. So I had something about setting a reminder up, which uh, is good because then that basically is giving you a reminder. Can I go back and edit this? Let me go. I'm going back to edit the task. Go to next. Go to next. Go to next. Set up a reminder. Okay, so it was there. Okay, good. Please confirm. Yes. Okay. All right, cool. So now um, we're getting through it. So here's the campaign. It's starting to get built. You're going to go and go and go, right? So just keep in mind that the timing you're doing, everything starts from the day that the campaign is turned on. So if the campaign's going to start today, that's how the timing is all set up. So this is basically a year later telling me it's over. And the reason is, is that I'm going to keep loading up stuff in here until I have a year's worth of content. Now, will I go every day? Hell no. That you mean, if it's early on, I'm going to be way more heavy at the beginning of the campaign, probably send two or three things out the first week, two or three things out the second week, maybe uh, two things out the third week, two things out the fourth week, and then kind of loosen up as we're going along. But if you're sending good content and you're getting better open rates and people are talking to you, right, then you know, hopefully you're able to identify the hot people. Now, for me, and in my CRM, I've got... Um, 30 some campaigns pre-built, 30, uh, that are for all different types. So I have one in there that's a top of mind campaign. So when we don't, you know, when we've talked to them, but they're not quite ready, I've got three different top of mind campaigns for buyers and three different ones for sellers. So, you know, you create campaigns that you can use and move people around depending on the conversation. But the last thing you want is not is to have them lose track of you. That's that's the thing. You don't want to lose track of those people. So, uh, and they, you don't want them losing track of you. So, if the campaign ends, um, or and then you don't send them anything else, or they tell you I'm not ready, and all you do is put a reminder to call them in nine months, you still want to stay in front of them with something. So, I mean, at minimum, I'd be sending them over to my site to look at listings every few months, or I mean, every every week. Unfortunately, now you have to set that up manually in here over and over again, which kind of stinks, but you could. I like the recurring thing. Um, so, I mean, our goal is to is to have you drive people to your site as much as you can and make sure that you've got tags and everything on there for SEO if you're going to do that. Okay. All right. So now you've got it. That's how you build the campaign. I mean, it's it's different. Um <laughs> And uh, it's it, it, one of the things to me, again, that's challenging about it is that you cannot see the full campaign while you're building it. So you might need to build it, come over and look at it, and then go back and create some more actions if you need to move things around. Now, if you need to edit something, you can click on the pencil and come back and set the timing if it's different, because this is where it was kind of challenging, because I couldn't see how far apart it is. So if you have created your email templates where you've added that timing in, it will help you when you're looking for the email templates on what day to put it on. So that's why I did that, so that you can give yourself a reference while you're building it, because while you're building it, you cannot see the campaign, which is a little bit annoying. <laughs> so just keep that in mind that it's you're just not going to be able, you just have to have it ready and, and give yourself some references, okay? Um, again, I'm not here to, to, I'm here to, I'm here to teach you the best way possible and so that you're not reinventing a wheel if you can help it. Um, and again, you know, if you need campaigns, we've got a bunch of campaigns in here that you can reach out to me for. Um, and, uh, I have training, but most of my training currently is built in V1. So if you're a V1 user, I have a whole ton of training course in, uh, on V1. Um, I'm not going into too much detail on building a big, huge course for V2, but I do want to help out everybody who's new or has gotten training from me in the past 
to try to get you up to speed if you're still using Lion Desk, because, you know, we all love Lion Desk. So that's where we're at. Okay. Um, if you're wanting some other stuff, though, I'm not going to lie. I got my own CRM right now, and um, I'm really excited to be able to um, share that with people. So if you want to learn more, just head over to engagemorecrm.com. You don't need the home part on there. Just go to engagemorecrm.com. Uh, when you get over here, uh, if you go into, uh, you can check out the campaigns. I have over 30 of them pre-built in my CRM already. So um, if it's something you're interested in learning more about, it's engagemorecrm.com. Otherwise, I do have campaigns already built in Line Desk, And if you're going to stay there, um, you can go search them in the library and, and check it out and uh, just reach out to me because I've got you know a lot of help I can give you. All right, so I hope this was helpful to you. Uh, please do um, reach out if you need any help in anything related to lead follow-up, drip campaigns, any of that stuff. Um, and uh, if you want any more training in Lion Desk other than this, reach out and let me know. I um, you know I love I love training on this. <laughs> I love training on anything CRM and follow up related. All right. Well, good luck to you. Thank you so much. And make sure to subscribe to the channel. Bye.